to the Way of Wonder, everybody. I'm here with my uh, good friend, you know, my uh, like a this brother from another mother who's also my father in the spiritual realm, the esteemed, the illustrious Father Patrick Schultz, to walk you through beauty. And here he is. There he is. Look at him. The esteemed, the illustrious. Thanks, Bill. Sure, you're welcome. I appreciate it. it I, I'm always, every, every week, I'm like, how is he going to introduce me this time? I know. <laughs> Yeah, I should put more forethought into it. But anyway, you're great. And thanks for you're being great. here. You're great. You're great, Stolz. Well, um, we are thoroughly enjoying this saunter through uh, the sublime. Heck I yeah. Just, I just made that up. And uh, you're going to be leading off today. But uh, just, just a shout out to people who've been uh, tagging in on YouTube and sharing their thoughts. And also privately sending us messages. I got a glorious email the other day. Which maybe, oh. I'll, maybe I'll read this at the end. And... Um, even here at the Institute, we have a student upstairs. I just met her and she said, I love the way of wonder. I'm going to be doing it with my small group. We're going to, I'm going to take my women's Bible study through this. So That's really incredible. Yeah. That's pra awesome. Praise the Lord. We're just having fun. So if anyone, I can, thought it was just us talking to each other yeah. and, and Wait, Tom other, was listening. I thought yeah, that was it. Yeah. And Dan, other people are out there too. Yeah. What? Well, let's open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit, to the God who is beauty, as we step into episode seven. Is this episode seven, Thomas? Eight. Episode, episode eight. eight. Whoops. Yeah. Eight. Episode eight. It's great. And uh, tag your it. I am in the Marian position to be destroyed by beauty, so I'm ready to receive whatever you got to throw at me, Father Patrick. Yeah, I'm throwing, I'm throwing some interesting curveballs at you today. So the la past couple of weeks, we've been doing uh, just, you know, we're starting off with a quote mm -hmm. from different philosophers, theologians, a former a student of yours. That's right. Uh, oh, man, that was so great. That was. I'm the quote for today that we're starting with is scripture. I'm going to give you a little line mm -hmm. from Genesis. Uh, Genesis 15, verse 5. Mm. Those who are playing along, here we go. Genesis 15, verse 5. He, the Lord, took Abram outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. That's it. That's all you get for today. Genesis 15, <laughs> verse 5. All right. You're the Lord God this. bringing Abram out of his tent to look up to the heavens mm. And uh, this is one of those like, okay, I think once you see the image, it'll, it's part of the reason why I chose this quote will make more sense. But the, the, the scripture itself is, there's, there's enough good stuff there, obviously, to, oh, to yeah. chew on for a while. So go. Okay. Well, you sure started at the top with the inspired word of God. So yeah, if I don't have anything to share right now, I, I must be spiritually dead. So <clears throat> yeah, I love it. I love scripture where creation, reality, nature is is in it you know yeah um yeah. you know when i when i think of uh so many of my favorite scriptures it is something like that it's elijah in the cave it's jesus saying look at these wildflowers and these birds um so yeah this is one of them i love it go out and look up <laughs> gosh so personally experientially when i do what abraham's doing i always get refreshed i always feel uh both humbled before the grandiosity of the uh, grandiosity of the cosmos and then i feel really special because god loves me and god put me here yeah uh so it's it's ironic that you're sharing this particular scripture because <laughs> i woke up at four o'clock this morning and i went out for an hour and a half and watched the lunar eclipse oh uh, you know? what last night and it was a blood moon or an orange moon i forgot what they called it it was nuts I'm, I miss, are you telling me I missed the moon last night? Uh, I missed apparently the Apparently you did, yeah. I guess, you know, your pillow is more important than the cosmic beauties that the Lord's given us. But that's your choice. I was deep. In you were, yeah, you were probably, you were seeing other kinds of stars, you know, in your dreams. Yeah. yeah. But I was, I did that. I just went out and put myself under that for a good hour and a half. Rebecca, my wife, thought I was crazy when I came back in. You did what? But I saw um, beauty. And mm. it was a slow, solemn unfolding. And the moon was really... This kind of, uh, I don't want to say spooky because that has different connotations, but uh, an ethereal uh, orange-ish glow. And it's like it was going to pop, like the shading on the moon. It was so wild. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's my experience coming from the scripture you just read about Abraham going out under the yeah. stars or under the sky. Yeah. Yeah, I part of... 
part, we'll connect this to the image in a second, but part of the reason why I love this scripture so much, I mean, to put yourself in Abram's shoes, right? Like this is a man who's already so old <laughs> and childless. His name means father of many, right? Yeah, irony. The irony, right? And the suffering in that irony, the suffering mm. in that irony that he has carried with him I mean, think about his early years of marriage with his wife and like the hoped for heirs and descendants right. and like every month coming by and for Sarah, nothing mm. is happening. And just the, like the whole story of him trying, I'm sure he probably was like, like, like we'll, we'll just try again. Like we've got yeah. a good God. He's faithful. We'll try again. We'll yeah. try again. And then like just watching like hope shrivel in his mm -hmm. heart, you know, and seeing the Lord wait till he's like at the, like the ripe old very age. ripe old <laughs> age of whatever he is, 70 something, 80 something. I, I, I think he was, I think he was 75 or so at this point, or maybe. Even yeah. Older. You know, like the average father, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's at the very end of it. Right. And it's from that point, the Lord, at, that's when the Lord steps in. It's just like, I mean, that's what he does. It's like what he did with the yeah. Israelites on the shore of the Red Sea. When you have nothing else mm -hmm. that you can do, mm -hmm. the Lord makes a way when there's apparently no way. So 75 years old, he says, step outside of your tent, this small confined space. And I love that line, just look up to the heavens. Yeah. Yep. Right? Like, and he's like, the Lord, it's like the Lord has the audacity to fan the flames of his desires again. <laughs> right? Look up to the heavens, <clears throat> count, count the stars if you can, right? Because you can't. Mm -hmm. Count the stars if you can't, so your descendants will be. Just, mm -hmm. just the connection between our hearts, our desires, looking up, the heavens, the things that like, like I think just hope dies because we look down. We eventually look down. We were looking up for a long time, and then yeah. we look down. And here's the Lord look up look up mm. Ugh. that's powerful i yeah yeah I, I didn't go right there to abraham's i went to my experience but abraham you're right this is a i love the word audacity that you said there because it's i mean you could abraham could have been like you know what i'm staying in my tent i'm yeah. sorry i i love you but uh i'm tired and i'm old and i don't want to but uh yeah to 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 fan the flames again. And just even thinking about that line of, you know, if you can, to your point, you can't. Maybe we can today with all the light pollution, we could like do it and maybe get up to 70 or 80 stars. But in Abraham's day, we're talking the entire Milky Way. We're talking, you know, little flames in the sky. They could see everything. They're just tens of thousands, I'm sure. They could really see them. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So like the the other connection I'm thinking to right now, we both love mm. and both have seen Shawshank Redemption. In fact, it was I was just watching it last night. Oh, you were right. The 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 dichotomy between Andy mm. and Red, right? Yes. Red, he's stopped looking up. He starts looking down, and he yeah. doesn't want he doesn't want beauty to float into his world to reawaken hope yes. in him. Yeah. Right. And that scene where he just blows that one note in the on the harmonica at night. But that's oh. what beauty does, right? Cool. Beauty reawakens hope. Like it mm. fans that flame of desire in our hearts. So how about with that? Let's let's go to the, the image that I, I sent to Thomas. So Okay. There you go. Look at this. Holy. Wow. So let me tell you what you're seeing here. Okay. This is the north, the 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 mm. furthest most northmost transept of Westminster Cathedral, Westminster Abbey in London. Mm. This is where the queen was laid to rest. Mm. This is the ceiling. Basically, imagine I'm laying on the floor. <laughs> Did you I take this take, picture? I took this picture. Yeah, I was when oh. I was in when I was in Oxford this past summer trip. in July, and I went to mm -hmm. we did a trip to London. Gosh. Um, so there's there's a few details about this that I want to share first. That so we, we had this wonderful tour of Westminster, and uh, marvelous tour guide. And there's so much to see. There's so much beauty around you. Mm. And uh, 
we were walking into this part of the Abbey, Westminster Abbey, and um, I'm looking around, looking around at all the things around me, and a buddy next to me just taps me on the shoulder and says, look up. And I was like, <laughs> like breathless, like that the sun coming in through the window, the, wow. the, the ornamentation of that ceiling. And yeah. so the, that's what I saw. That's what I saw. Wow. That ceiling is insane. It, it's like webs yeah. of stone. And just so perfect. And it's and so uh, the, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Just, so the, this, se the second image that I have that I want to show you is Thomas, go ahead. The first one that you had up there. Okay. So I looked up and then I looked to my right <laughs> oh, no. and there are these two English <laughs> no, no. lads sitting no, no, on no. chairs. Like and I just captured this like candid of them. Oh uh, my gosh. If they ever watch way of wonder, Hi guys. God you bless. Know. And we're praying yeah. for your souls. Yeah. For the so, salvation of your souls. The like if they would have just looked up, that's what they would have seen. Oh my goodness. But instead they were looking So you took at... both of these pictures within seconds yes. of each other. Yes. 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 You're yes. gobsmacked by the by the beauty, the unbelievable yeah. beauty. And then you see those who are not. Yeah. I mean, maybe they did. Maybe they, maybe they, I don't know. Let's hope. And maybe they, maybe they couldn't stand anymore and they just had to yeah. sit down and maybe they're texting their friends about it. Maybe. Let's, let's I hope. I just let's got hope. rocked by beauty, guys. Yeah. Oh, man. That, what a. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot to process here because the senses are overloaded by that image of, of that ceiling. You're, you're just. You're, you you start your head starts to spin because of every detail and every inch is just covered and those flags even are like these um yeah you know I feel like I'm on Aslan's how you know and the banners are unfurled and we're preparing for war <laughs> yeah and the light yeah, yeah. the the sense that I had when I stepped into this space was to stand here you cannot help but feel I'm made for another world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. C.S. Lewis, who I'm sure would have stood in Westminster Abbey many times. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. This, this transcendence, this pull, this tug that, yeah, the whole look up. I love your theme this week. Look up, look up, look out. And just what delights fill you, if you can do that. Yeah. Hmm. I want to go there. I want to go there. <laughs> it is. Uh, I mean, and the the stained glass, the mm. the play of light, and you know, the, one of the things I was thinking about when this was built, or when any of these Gothic cathedrals were built. Yeah. Like the. It was so clear. So, like, imagine the people who came in and made pilgrimage to to Westminster. Like, mm -hmm. the average English peasant. Yeah. Right. What are you surrounded by? You're surrounded by drab things. You're surrounded by bad smells. You're surrounded <laughs> by um, rough to the touch, coarse fabric, mm -hmm. cold, like shallow, narrow ceilings, right? So imagine being an English peasant oh my word. and to step into a space like this, mm. your, your nose is blasted with incense. <laughs> uh, and remember, like this was a Catholic church, right? Right. right. Your nose is blasted with incense. The, the colors that you see, you've never seen colors like that. I'm sure. Before. Right. You've Unless never you seen the money to. Yeah. You've never seen a ceiling like this. You've never seen glass like this. You've never like. You've never experienced anything like this. You you just would have been so immediately transported mm -hmm. into heaven. Like yeah. this is heaven. I think yeah, their experience is um, you know, of uh maybe a small village pub, uh a barn, you know, a cottage probably didn't go over 30 40 feet high. Well, yeah. I'm assuming. Certainly not. So here you are where you 
you're in a space that seems to be pulling you into the outer space, into infinite space, almost. Because yeah. once you hit that ceiling, which is so high above any of their experiences, you're then you're drawn into the the intricacies and the uh, the swirls and the symmetry and the all all the intricate dance of stone. And then your you know, your mind is blown. You're just thinking, how did they do that? We did that. <laughs> For God. And so therefore, like God is even so, you know, saying they're stepping into heaven, right? And then it's like, but we made this. So what's heaven like? If yes. this is the, the breath of inspiration, wait till we meet the one who actually breathed that inspiration. Then we're really going to yeah. explode. <laughs> wow. And, you know, the the longer I've looked at this ceiling, the more <clears throat> um, organic hmm. it looks to me. Like I see the... I mean, you see the swirling patterns, you see, you know, yeah. gesturing at the the golden ratio, you see all of that in mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like the, if you were to like, you know, crack open like a sand dollar, the skeletal structure of a sand dollar, it looks, yeah. it looks like something organic, you know, and it's true. And like, we're, we're looking at something that like these architects, like the, the men who built this, the men who put the stone on that ceiling, like they knew that this was a project that was going to last beyond them, that they, yes. they weren't probably going to see the end of it, but it was a, a task <clears throat> worth doing that it was worth putting that much effort into the detail because like, that's how God creates. Like they're, they're, they're mm. mimicking the lavishness of God. Yes. I love it. That whole point that this work, the work of their hands is something because cathedrals could take a hundred, two, three hundred years to build sometimes. I mean, that's generations. Yeah. And to think, uh, I'm not signing my name anywhere. This is not about me. This is about him. Uh, that detachment, you know, first that, that, that lavish, superfluous love, like I'm just doing my best with the best materials. And then I'm just, and then I'm going to move on. <laughs> and, uh, and others will enjoy it. And here we live in a culture that has every single year the iPhone 13, the iPhone 14, the iPhone 15. (laughs) Like we just, we're, we're, it's so transitory, right? And then you, what do you do with the old ones? You chuck it. Does anybody have an Mm -hmm. iPhone 2? Anyone out there have an iPhone 3? No, you just chucked it. It's gone, right? But this stands for centuries. Please God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about right now, Father Pat, the, uh, was it 2019 when the cathedral of, of Notre Dame burned? Remember uh. that? that was a moment because people suddenly people woke up when this, this thing happened, this burning, it, it pierced the world's heart. People were just, Oh my goodness. And uh, the people of France were gathered across the, uh, the river there singing Marian hymns. Did you ever see any of those videos that people are weeping? They're singing hymns. You know, probably just all different backgrounds could have been some, you know, who knows what in there singing or just feeling and crying. They recognized, wow, something that took generations to build that was the best of the best in craftsmanship and materials is burning. And they just felt it. I don't know. We feel that way if like a Walmart burns down today. Would you feel that Mm. compunction of heart? No. (laughs) It's Mm. like, Mm. it's like, I hope everybody's okay. And then you move on. But but something like this is so holy, yeah, and otherworldly in our world that we, uh, man, this is the whole thing. We need beauty. We yes. need it. We need it to breathe, you know. And and just to just to push <clears throat> it further, like we need our churches to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, to to this point that we just were saying, I think, mm. like this, the the rapidity with which culture has developed you know like things are accomplished faster and faster yeah it's led to this this way of thinking that okay if we're going to build a church we should be able to see its completion in like if imagine imagine you know an architect firm saying all right pastor you want to build a new church um maybe 90 years from now (laughs) like 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 no we're getting a different bid like i'm talking yeah, a year swip- or two max. He swipes to the left. Yeah, another architect. And if, it's, and if it's a year or two max, mm. that's that's 
a priori built into that is, well, it, you're going to have to have, you're going to be cutting, maybe not, not safety corners, but you're going to, you're going to be cutting the, hmm. the, the intricacy, the, the, the potential for ornate beauty, right? Yeah. Cause you, you can't build that in two years. Heck no. No, nope. you can't do that. Right. And, and like the, the uglification <laughs> of our churches, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, when we we're in the midst of this Eucharistic revival, I'm, I'm, you know, no one write letters, but this is what I, I, I really genuinely think when you strip from the liturgy, when you strip from hmm. the, the worship, including the spaces, right? All of yeah. the external signs and symbols of beauty, of majesty, of grandiosity, of transcendence. Well, of course, people are going to stop looking up. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're going to start looking down. Of course, it's going to be like, it's easier to believe in the, the, the propositions of the faith in a space like Westminster than yeah. it is in the average suburban parish. True. It's Absolutely. just, just true. And think of how theology of the body uh, that is, how TOB that is, that my external, what I'm seeing, uh, touching affects my beliefs, right? A affects my image of God. So yeah. as we've dumbed down uh, our architecture and it no longer has this spiraling transcendence, uh, it's moved from like a theocracy where God orders all things to a democracy, you know, and the center becomes the priest or the parish council or the big campaign that's coming. And it's just like the wagons are circled up and we're kind of just staring at each other. Rather than this, this immediately pulls everybody up in that swirl, up, 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 beyond ourselves, beyond, beyond, beyond. It's not about us. It's not about us. But a lot of these modern churches, the way they're built, it seems to be all about us. Yeah. It just, it, yeah. It, it's locked in. It's just, it, it's dead. It's got a, it's got a glass ceiling or whatever you want to call it. It just stops. Yeah. And you feel yeah. it viscerally. You feel it in your body when you walk into one of those churches. Yeah. And, oh. and I think that like, so Bill, you sent me a picture yesterday of the, the Japanese maple in your, in your neighbor's oh, yard. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, what I loved about the picture, it wasn't just like you in the yard taking a picture of the tree, like you got underneath the tree. I did. I did. And, <laughs> and like that image is suddenly flashing my mind right now. Like that's kind of like this perspective. Yeah. Right? Looking mm -hmm. at these columns going up and then the intricacy of the leaves up there, right? Mm. Like that tree, which is so beautiful, mm -hmm. didn't spring up out of your yard in two years, right? Right. Three right. years. Time. Time it's unfolding. Time the slow organic mm -hmm. crock pot process of God's <laughs> ways, right? Like that's that if you want beauty, give it time. Yeah, give it time, right? That's why like hell is ugly and fast paced and yeah. loud. Mm hmm. Exactly. So like, yeah, here's the thing I, I want to I'm going to step into the axio here because we got we got to act on we have to start acting differently. <laughs> And creating yeah. differently and demanding more. We can't. Was it Dostoevsky who said, uh, we need beauty more than bread? Or Solzhenitsyn. Wolf. Yeah. It might have been Solzhenitsyn. We need beauty more than bread. We, we think we need bread more than beauty today. Mm. We need beauty more. Like long term. Health of the soul. You know, flourishing of humanity. We, we're dying. We are dying. Church is boring. You know, you, you don't walk into Westminster Abbey and say, oh, this is boring. What else is on? If you walk in here <laughs> open eyed, you're like, holy crap, can I live here? Can yeah, I live here? Exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Unless, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Unless you don't see it. Unless, Unless you've got the look, look yeah. down device. Yeah. Unless you're playing Roblox with your buddy. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Look up. Your redemption is near at hand. Luke something something. I forget the exact verse, but look up. <laughs> Your redemption is near at hand. I love it, Father Pat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I for me, that's the axio. Like just throughout the day. It, yeah. To that's fight simple. against to fight against these <laughs> darn things that just like I mean, no one unless you're looking at your phone on your bed, you don't look up on your phone. You are always <laughs> looking down and then you, you drop it on your nose, right? That's right. 
this thing is <sighs> intended to bring you down. Literally. Literally. We have to be intentional about it, everybody. We have to be intentional about it. Now, if you're watching this video on your smartphone, you're probably laughing. And we're, <laughs> yeah. we're laughing with you, but we all get it. We're all using it as it's meant to be as a tool to convey some information. That information, we hope, will lead to a transformation, which means once you get the information, we're talking about this amazing Westminster Abbey ceiling. Put down the thing and then go outside and go into the woods and look up at the canopy of trees and realize, whoa, I bet those artists got inspired by their walks in the woods. And that's how yeah. these architects sculpted these beautiful columns and these intricate webs and the flying buttresses and the whole construction. Wow, how do they do that? And then you're in with God, right? You're in it. You're in the mystery of creation. That's it. That is it. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Good stuff. We just double side at the same time in stereo. <sighs> Well, if you're watching this, um, let's go on a cathedral kick here. In the chat, in the comments, throw down some cathedrals you've been in that have just gobsmacked you and made you just <laughs> overwhelmed, be, become overwhelmed. Uh, and you know what? We're This is a little shout out for 2024. We're planning a pilgrimage to Oxford for the new Tolkien Lewis course. And uh, I'm sure we could swing on over to Westminster Abbey. So that's mm -hmm. 2024. we got to get back there. I think you'll be back there too, Father Pat. I think so. All right. Thank you for that gift. Yeah, man. All right. Cool. All right. So the word is look up. And that's what we're going to do, gang. Everybody, close your laptops, turn off your iPhones, throw them in a bucket of rice or something, and get outside and enjoy all the gifts that are coming to us. Amen? Amen. Amen.